My Hero Academia Season 7 Episode 2 has been released, titled Spectre. The episode starts with a flashback about Cassie. It goes into more detail about how Star struggles to accumulate power despite her quirk being incredibly strong. Star then explains that strength behind a quirk can also be mentality, but her brothers have her back, letting her know that it's nothing to worry about and she'll get stronger regardless of the challenges she faces. She only felt weak back then because she was comparing herself to the overwhelming strength of All Might. We then cut back to where the episode ended last week with the Tiamat missiles heading towards the battle. Star understood that to make sure the missiles hit their target, she would have to create another rule to redirect them, but in return it would have to give up a previous rule, which would be the massive laser beam sword that she was holding. So she would once again call on her bros to help with cover fire. However, Shigaraki knew something was being planned. He knew that Star was just buying time for a greater attack to arrive. The Tiamat missiles would finally arrive, and with no wasted time, the air giant would grab onto the missile and Star would use another rule to redirect the missiles. Just before the impacts though, we would see a black silhouette of what is assumed to be Shigaraki. We'll touch on that in a moment though, because the missiles quickly impact and a massive explosion goes off. So big that even Endeavor can see it all the way back on Japan's shores. Star would begin to question whether or not she was able to destroy Shigaraki once and for all, but just then, as she was pondering that very question, Shigaraki would jump out towards Star looking like a bird chicken nugget. To avoid the massive explosion, Shigaraki actually used Decay to get himself underground where he could minimize damage. He did this just as Star used a new order to redirect the missiles. So the black silhouette that we saw earlier was actually a Nomu that Shigaraki used as bait. Shigaraki even explains that if he was slightly off with his timing, then it still could have been very fatal for him. In no time at all, Shigaraki began regenerating and when the jets tried to use some cover fire, Shigaraki's Nomu released all that built up energy from the explosion and re-released it. Shigaraki would use his time to close the distance and would go for Star. One of the bros told Star to crush his jet in with Shigaraki in order to use the explosion from the jet to kill Shigaraki and him in the process. But Star knew that this would not work and instead would smile and let Shigaraki steal her quirk. We then hear all for one monologue about how he didn't want New Order this early. His original plan was to actually take one for all and then take on New Order because he knew it would be a gamble otherwise. But him and Shigaraki taunt Star by saying that despite the circumstances, he still won the gamble. Star would then use New Order while it was being taken to impose the rule that she would not decay. But unfortunately, she had hit her limit in stamina and would still start to decay. But it was not over. Notice how Star's air giant disappeared. On the surface, it looked like it had vanished due to Star's new order being stolen. But in fact, Star had actually imposed two rules just before Shigaraki got her. She used the rule of her body not decaying, which ended up not working. But the other rule she made was that new order would oppose other quirks. So when Shigaraki stole her quirk, new order would actually work against him and begin destroying all the other quirks inside of him, causing his body to completely rupture and break apart as we get this amazing visual of Star becoming a complete monster within Shigaraki and destroying all of his other quirks. Star's quirk here could also be so powerful inside of Shigaraki because of her mentality, which is exactly what I mentioned before at the beginning of the episode when the idea was dropped of quirk's power being equal to a strong mental state. This may also explain why there's quirk awakenings within the show because it's all connected to your mental state and how you're feeling in the moment of battle. Star then monologues about this being the only outcome that could have worked. She would explain that it would have been nice to be able to keep her body, but even if that wasn't possible, just making this sacrifice was worth it. And that's what makes America's number one hero so admirable. Shigaraki knew that he was in trouble and would begin to panic. He knew that a quirk could only be stolen or given, so he would start to plan on giving the quirk to one of the pilots and then retaking it. But in that moment, the bros would all get in formation and 
blast Shigaraki with lasers, giving him no time to recover. And thanks to Star, Shigaraki's reflect quirk had actually already been destroyed. Speaking about Star, her body begins to decay even further as she falls through the air, reminiscing once again about her past and how much All Might inspired her to become a pro hero. And with that, she gives one last salute as we finally say goodbye to America's number one hero. Shigaraki at this moment used a quirk from one of the Nomus that died earlier to get away. The jets followed closely behind Shigaraki, but he would use EMP to prevent them from pursuing. Shigaraki was left absolutely frustrated, once again annoyed that everything seemed to connect to All Might. The Air Force team was rightfully upset about Star's sacrifice, wishing they could have done more as they remembered Star's shining personality. We then cut to some criminals who were chilling near a dock trying to watch TV. In that very moment though, Shigaraki would come bursting through the wall, hoping to pass new order onto someone else so that he would be able to stop taking damage. Shigaraki would then lunge at the criminal. He was planning to make the criminal quirkless and then pass new order onto him and take it back. But unfortunately for Shigaraki, Star would once again interject, explaining that her rule was to oppose other quirks and that she would also get caught in that backlash, meaning that even new order itself would be destroyed. And with that, the corpse of new order would disintegrate. We then get a closer look of inside the mangled body of All for One and Shigaraki and we would see a young Tenko who is thinking on Star's final words and when it's on the subject of heroes, Midoriya comes to mind. Now with the fight over, the news of America's number one hero dying in battle would spread across the world. If countries were already struggling with sending reinforcements, they're definitely not sending any now because Star was seen as the strongest hero around the world, minus All Might in his prime of course. So if Star lost her life in battle, then other countries were certainly not taking that risk. We then cut to All Might receiving the news of Star's death, wishing he was able to see her one last time before her untimely demise. The bros would then explain to All Might that the jets they were flying were X-66s that were able to collect data on the fight against Shigaraki, which would help Japan find any weaknesses in Shigaraki's body. With this news, All Might would visit Class 1A and let them know that due to Star's sacrifice, it bought them more time. Before Shigaraki's quirks were mostly destroyed by Star, Shigaraki's body would have been complete by this time, but due to Star's final rule, it managed to give the students an extension of time equivalent to one week, where they can train to become stronger, and with the students knowing that they're heading into the final all-out war between heroes and villains, All Might would also reminisce on how far Class 1A had come, going from scared students who were afraid in their first fight to full-fledged heroes who are ready to take on the danger ahead. And with that, the episode ends. I'm saying it right now, it's a great time to be a My Hero fan as things are ramping up. We still have the UA Traitor arc to go before we head into the All Out War, but it's clear that this season we should be seeing the start of the All Out War. Until then, we'll probably see our heroes train a little bit more as I know some of them are going to need some more power before heading into this final battle. As always, if you're going to comment any manga spoilers, then please use a spoiler warning but otherwise click on this video next if you would like to see more from me internet stranger if not then i hope you have a great day pine tree logging off